I have been a biologist. I loved dance from uh, my childhood on. Um, but my profession should be being a biologist and um, loving movement, loving all kind of movement. But I was not um, f fixed, fixed um, on a ballet movement. I was totally free from I have to move in a special way. And so meeting um, uh, other people um, in these times coming from the sports, in the collective there were people coming from the sports, um, there were um, uh, educated choreographers, educated dancers, so it was a mixed group of people having passion in their hearts to, to dance. And I think this was a big chance. Um, we had a lot of discussions about what is good enough to present on stage. Um, we had discussions about aesthetics. Um, we had discussions about politics. Um, uh, these were times where uh, there was uh, houses in Berlin were quartered. Is this the name? Spots, yeah. yeah. So we did benefits uh, um, performances for <laughs> um, people living uh, in in uh, quartered houses. So we all came out of the thinking of it could be a better world. We are all the same, <laughs> I mean this is idealistic, but uh, we have all the same chances, we have all the same possibilities. If we take the chance, we can uh, uh, success all together and we're stronger together, so all these uh, idealistic uh, thoughts. Um, so the competition was not so strong, but uh, it developed. Uh, we actually we started with no money. That was uh, maybe <laughs> the best thing. Um, when then uh, we got money and support from the Senate, it started uh, the discussions: who will get the money for the project? So there started the competition. For sure, and then also the discussions about style started because there was also a one uh, group coming from the Folkwang uh, Tanztheater education and uh, school and um, aesthetic, and others came from the States, more the Wigman tradition, yeah, Mary Wigman tradition. Um, so there was then like discussions about uh, what is more interesting for a public um, um, is it important to have super technique long legs um, discussions about this and so in the group of Tanzfabrik we uh, also separated them more and more It was different, so um, some got money from their parents still, some were having a grant, um, some were doing jobs, uh, many did jobs, so I was a taxi driver <laughs> uh, uh, on Christmas days uh, through, the, uh, through the nights and in the morning at 10 o'clock I was starting the training. Um, uh, others were doing jobs in restaurants, bars, um, and you got easily jobs. This was also, so you didn't need a lot of money. You got um, cheap apartments to live in. Also Tanzfabrik, I mean, we found this big space of, uh, with big um, uh, uh, dance space. We had to work on it, but it was very cheap. And also you didn't need a lot of money for your rent. Um, uh, and you got jobs, so through that you can make it. And uh, um, also I think the audience, so the people who came to Tanzfabrik were very open for what we did. 
there, contemporary dance, there was no contemporary dance at these times beside Tanzfabrik. It was the first place where they could come, where they could take workshops. We were teaching, all of us were teaching and rehearsing and performing and we said uh, everybody who comes to our um, class who wants to move it was not professional training it was just uh, moving classes improvisational class and um, modern dance but uh, in different levels so for beginners everybody who wanted to dance and move, could take classes, Tai Chi, body work, so everything. And we said everybody who moves him or herself, they are a good audience because they know um, yeah, how to find a, a, a dance movement in your body. Mm -hmm. So um, there was also there a good exchange between the public and us. And it was... Um, not the separation we also did like open <laughs> open um, space uh, events for everybody who wanted to just sit him put himself on the stage and doing something could do that we called it a blue baby night because we said you can sit on the stage and just don't breathe um, until you get blue in your face and say that's my performance. So it was very open situation. Mm. My background is that I uh, was co-founder of Tanzfabrik with others. I learned to know how difficult it is to uh, make your life with dance, through dance. And uh, uh, I thought when I um, will be not any more actively dancing and choreographing, uh, I would like to uh, give a support to others. So give my knowledge to others. So and this I do through different um, in th different fields like teaching at the HCT, but also in the uh, free classes. Um, I'm working in the Dachverband, Tanz Deutschland. This is not only Berlin. I think we have to think bigger, so um, I'm not anymore in the ZTB, uh, only Berlin-wise, but uh, Germany-wide uh, engagement for dance. Um, and also through men doing mentoring work um, so uh, for the loft, I was uh, in this uh, mentoring uh, perform performing arts program, um, and I like to uh, work with uh, young dancers, choreographers, and uh, have talks with them too, have an exchange, give them some advice as far as I could give them, um, and could, also could through. Could you bring an, an example that comes to your mind of, of an advice that you, you will give? Um, yeah, for example, uh, Carol, uh, Kareth Schaffer, uh, she's my mentee in this um, performance art performing mentoring program. And uh, I just, uh, uh, we were talking about uh, how, how is the possibilities in Berlin? Where do I have to go? Um, is it that I do my work and stay with me very much uh, and then somebody uh, uh, finds me or uh, and I say no, no it's very important to stay in the communication with the whole field to talk to different people to um, to uh, tell them what your um, ideas are your concepts uh, not tell everybody, but um, be in communication with, um, uh, like uh, the how with Sophie and Seele, with all the uh, people who present dance programs in their uh, theaters, and uh, also try to be uh, offensive in a way, not 
Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, not that people run away and say, <laughs> I want to escape, but be very present and um, with your ideas. And also, uh, what is very important, uh, not to give up, because my experience is it takes years before um, people really see you. Yeah. And it might be they see you and then they let uh, forget about you again. So you have to be continuously present in a way. But not only trust that it's enough to, s to be active here in Berlin, try to connect also um, international wise and with colleagues also. Um, I mean, I know there is like a concurrence, sure, between uh, the choreographers, but uh, try to stay in, in a communication with them. Is it an advice to actually succeed in the, in the market or in the professional sphere? Uh, and, 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 and why to take for granted that an advice implies that this person will be successful? Mm -hmm. this, this is for mm -hmm. me one of, of the questions mm -hmm. that I have. Mm -hmm. I, I th think to this question, um, it's not enough to want to have success. It's not the power um, which makes the success. <laughs> I think the success um, comes itself if uh, an artist, and I think this is not only in the field of dance, this is in uh, fine arts, it's in music, if uh, there is like passion for um, uh, uh, for the art, um, it's like the, um, yeah, how to say that, uh, the readiness to um, give uh, you as a whole person in the process of doing art. So it's not separated. This is my profession and here am I privately. I think if it, it has to come together, there is no separation beside pr profession life and private life. And um, if, if, if somebody really wants to push the success, you can push it, but only through um, being in um, contact, in communication, in, uh, in the exchange with other people. I think the whole art field is um, um, a kind of a community. And um, then there are, say, um, artists, uh, it, it's also depending from the time, is the theme what you have, is this a theme of the time? Or is it more um, a little corner of uh, the art field? So it's also being lucky if you have the right theme. Um, but it's also not... Um, what I tell young choreographers, go for your ideas. Don't think, oh, this idea is hip now. This is a concept which goes and the juries go for it and you get this. It's not like that. Yeah. When I, you know, maybe it's every year it's uh, 350 or 70 or 390 um, applications <laughs> here in Berlin for project support. And I read a lot, a lot, a lot. And um, with this experience, um, you you know quite quickly there is um, fire, there is a wish, there is a strong will also to realize an idea. You, you get this, you get the sense to realize this and you then y you go for it mm -hmm. and you decide for that uh, if you're in the jury or if I am, uh, I am in the jury. Um, so if, if there is, you can read out of the application, oh, the person thought that might be an interesting theme. It's boring, sorry, <laughs> but uh, it's like that. 
uh, why why should be the artist the one who needs to go around mm -hmm. uh, why not the, the job for instance of programmers and curators or even of jury is to come to the artist mm -hmm. no? in, because yeah. otherwise the, the the people who are much more ready to socialize mm -hmm. they will have more chances than the others regardless of what is the yes. quality of the work yeah I agree and I uh, actually I think it should be like that I was uh, when I was in ju the jury, I was going very much to the artists, not to them personally, but to uh, to look at pieces. And I think if um, a person goes in a jury, um, it's the responsibility of uh, these people to go to the artists in that way, looking at their work, looking what they present, looking also how is their process of producing to learn to know about uh, I mean you can't do that for uh, with uh, 390 <laughs> artists but um, um, when I was in the jury I said it's not enough to just read the applications I have to see what the artist develops through years so f for me it's very important also the development of the work of an artist, so um, to to give them the chance, and this is what I meant before. Berlin has to give the chance to uh, the choreographers for a longer period of time. Not only there's a young hipster, and we give money to this artist, and then they will make their way. No, it's the it's also the kind of a um, chance what they get to develop their work very much and then you can read the work of an artist which is very nice when, when you compare with um, with these times that you mentioned before about when you were in the first year of Tans Fabric no? mm -hmm. when you compare or remember what mm -hmm. was the the yeah what, what kind of attitude an artist will have or what was the motivation or the drive uh, do you see like now a big difference how now young artists uh, what are uh, what is moving them or, or what is the understanding of uh, selling oneself do you see like also that there is a huge difference between generations that before maybe there was a different spirit or, or way of mm -hmm. uh, or priorities maybe maybe community mm -hmm. and sharing was more important in the 90s than now mm -hmm. I mean I have no idea simply mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. W w what comes to your mind when you uh, compare the, the, the generations and... Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I would say in the 70s, 80s, um, uh, here in Berlin, uh, it was the time after the um, uh, 68er, yeah. so, the, so the, the left movement. Uh -huh. um, so in our collective, we were discussing a lot about um, political things, about society. So it was not, we are doing dance and only looking for steps and aesthetic. It was also discussion about what, uh, oh, what's life, yeah? And I think, um, um, Actually, I think you can't be a good artist if you're not realizing what happens in the world. And if you don't um, also try to... Um, as an artist, um, we have responsibilities too. Yeah, so... Um, you're maybe the artists have have the chance to sense quite more differentiated than other people who go to work they <laughs> start work at eight and leave work at six and then they have free time and they get drunk and uh, or yeah <laughs> do something else um the artist uh, what i said before there's no separation between professional life and private life so it's just one and uh, and uh, you have the chance and the time to uh, to have your own 
rhythm of working to develop your own ideas in your timing and this gives uh, the artist a chance to um, to have a very sensible perception for what is in the world mm. and I think you can't say this doesn't interest me I just do um, choreography for the form or for the aesthetic. To fight for autonomy of the dance is a political statement because quite often um, it happens and happened that like um, other disciplines used dance uh, elements of the dance and just took it and um, <laughs> yeah instead of um, saying this is uh, the dance is uh, w we think it's very important uh, it's a discipline which we want to invite and have an interdiscipline uh, uh, result um, and also in the theaters the dance is uh, on the last step, on the lowest step, payment-wise, um, but also decision-wise. Uh, it's so seldom that um, a choreographer, a dance person, gets director of a theater, um, which has opera, music, um, has uh, theater and dance. Um, and I think this is not uh, fair uh, to the dance. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, I see these um, Durchlässigkeiten, um, permeability between the disciplines, and I think it's good that they um, developed. I like that. Um, but um, in the dance still, the, the dance um, starts out of the body as an instrument and it's different than theater. And um, we can't say, uh, we just mix it up, it's one thing. Uh, what I observe is uh, like Jan Fabre, when we look at Jan Fabre. He is, uh, in the meantime, on big um, um, uh, festivals like Biennale, Venice, like uh, big festivals all over, um, because he did this step into the fine arts. Like Tino Segal also did this step. And I'm questioning why does this happen only when like dance choreographers do the step into the fine arts then they get successful why are they not successful as dancers and choreographers but this is the hierarchy in the whole art field that i see and um, because there is this hierarchy i say Dachverband Tanz Deutschland is important to fight for the auto autonomy of the dance. Uh, what do you think that now it can be a, a task to continue working on or what does Berlin needs, I mean dance in Berlin needs, what do you think is something that uh, you will consider important that there is a kind of common awareness from people who care about dance in Berlin to, to continue working towards, like also towards maybe doing something, thinking about the future or to establish something or mm. do you have like a sense of what can be needed? What I think um, was a very important and big step to establish the HCT. I think this was um, um, after um, starting different centers for dance. There was Tanzfabrik, Tanztangente, then there was Doc Elf with Eden. 
than etage, also different places where um, dance was taught. And it was a, a very important step for professional uh, professionalisierung. I missed the words in English. <laughs> um, is it okay sometimes, the German word? Sure, yeah. almost, almost the same professionalization. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, in the uh, field of education, um, now it's the situation that Sascha Waltz is in, in Berlin, first time that a, a contemporary dance choreographer takes over the uh, directing position. I'm very looking forward seeing what she will do if she, for example, invites Berlin choreographers. I would say um, I would give this as an advice to her <laughs> if she would ask me. I think that would be um, a nice gesture, and it would be also very. Um, intelligent and clever to do this, really to to open up. And there are very interesting and good choreographers in Berlin, and to invite them would also be a next step for the um, institution of Staatsballett. I think the time is ready to do that, and not keep this as a ballet institution and say the dance scene that's something else really to um, to net it together i think um, and this would um, be important for berlin too because people look to berlin and what happens there and i think it's not enough that like um, uh, um, what's the durken comes to uh, the Volksbühne um, and you say, okay, dance is also one part which uh, takes place there. I think it would be a more important step to open up from, uh, uh, from the institution. And I, I, I see that also it's, people are talking very much about uh, opening up the um, the institutions see what happens in the free scene. I call it free scene in the um, not only dance but also performance theater. It develops. Uh, it developed a very strong field, and they needed to invite them, like uh, Rimini Protocol, like Shishi Pop like uh, Matthias Lilienthal is in the Residenz Theater. I mean that he is directing, uh, director the, the Residenz Theater. And um, it, Berlin needs to have such a strong, uh, strong position in dance. And we fight, fight it for long, long years with Nele Hartling. She was uh, really <laughs> leader of this, talking about Tanzhaus for Berlin. Um, I think maybe we don't need any more uh, uh, Tanzhaus. The opera should open up. I think this is the <laughs> time. Uh, it needs courage. The time is there. The time is ready. The dance scene of Berlin, it would be important and good, political-wise, to also have like a clear statement from the government and from the publicity, uh, uh, the public, um, uh, that it's important to have such a house or an, a theater for dance. But I think um, the development in the meantime is so far that the Staatsballett could open up and maybe get space, more space for Tanzhaus. And I don't say that Sascha Waltz should be the director of the Tanzhaus, but um, more open up the whole thing and not think Sascha Waltz now directing Staatsballett, keep the ballet 
uh, separated at the opera house and have a dance house on the other side. I think it should really uh, should give a bigger statement of the politics for the dance.